Rich Arena for a great girls hockey matchup, a non-conference top 10 battle here today. It's the Wyzetta Trojans paying a visit here to the Hill Murray Pioneers. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Dan Ficken. And Dan, outstanding season so far for Wyzetta. Coaching changes here. Taylor Williamson and her dad, Dean Williamson, taking over the Trojans, but they haven't missed a beat. Off to a really nice 7-2 and two start. Yeah, and they're 5-1 and one in their last six games, and they're playing a murderous schedule. They're playing the top 10 in the state. Done a real good job. Went up north to War Road and uh, Rozo split 1-1. One, one, and that's good going up there, I'll tell you. And those are two very good hockey teams they played. So they're on a roll right now and playing very well. And for Hill Murray, a look at the record doesn't really tell the tale. They've lost a few, but boy, have they been playing a tough schedule, and, and they've done well. They've had some injuries, but they're battling and, and still a really good hockey team. Well, you know, they lose to Dinah, They lose to Eden Prairie. They tie Blake. I mean, all right, there's the top ten right there. Both these schools played tremendous schedules. And they're 2, 3, and 1 in their last six, but there's some light at the end of the tunnel. They've had some injuries. Uh, they're working on getting a little bit better. Their numbers are down this year, but this is the Hill Murray Pioneers. Six tournament appearances and two state championships. Don't count them out of anything. And that's the deal with Wyzetta. We were saying before the game, I think in the last five, six years, they've become one of the better programs in the state, but Getting to state has been a very difficult challenge with the, the loaded section six double A field. Well, you know, what are you going to do? State champions, cha champions come out of that section. It's almost a state tournament within itself. But talking to Coach Kennedy, she is determined. The girls are determined to change that culture this year. They think they're good enough to get through the section. They want to go to state. They want to do something at state. It's been a big goal for them. It's a senior and junior laden team. And uh, they're focused and it showed up because their seniors have really played well. Let's talk about a couple of key players to look at in today's game starting with the visiting Trojans and Gretchen Branton is a player that you're going to notice and uh, definitely has that scorer's touch. Well, ever since she's been here she's had that scoring touch. She stepped up. She's got 21 points. Most importantly two power play goals. So when they get the opportunities she's the one that cashes in. So she's kind of like the straw that stirs the drink for them. Um, and she'll get them rolling. She was the one to score three goals against the Benilde St. Margaret's, which is a big, big win for them against a rival. And for Hill Murray, maybe not as big a name as a couple of their players, but Alex Beldy has really quietly had a nice year for them. One of their top scorers, and she's played well at both ends of the ring. Well, here we go with the senior. You know, she stepped up 13 points, but again, a couple power play goals. She's a natural scorer. Coach said that she just has a knack of putting the puck in the net, and, and they need it. Their goal scoring's down versus a typical Hill Murray team. They're playing great defense, but her goals make a lot of difference. You will notice that she's a two way player. She does just as well in the defensive end as she does in the offensive end, and that's really important for a good hockey player. So they can depend on her to get a lot of things done for the Pioneers. We'll be noticing her at number three tonight. Obviously not a conference or section opponent for either of these teams, but Dan, you look at this one as, well, A, a chance to really get better against a good team, but also a good resume builder for whichever one wins this game. To have that when you go to a section meeting to say, hey, we beat Wyzetta or we beat Hill Murray would be pretty big. Well, I've been in them section meetings, and I'll tell you what, the resume means a lot. That's why they play the schedules they do. Plus, they're good hockey teams. They want to play other good hockey teams. It doesn't do them any good to win 19 to 1. They want the close games against the really good teams, and it makes them better. And that helps kids get scholarships. It helps scouts come out to games and all that. And besides that, their tradition. I mean, Hill Murray Pioneers, if you don't know about them, you don't know hockey in the state of Minnesota. That's part of what they do. Was that is doing the same thing. They haven't gotten off of the hook of the sections yet. Once they do that, they'll be recognized as a top program. All right, the JV game was a great one. Came down to Hill Murray winning it with just over a minute to go. We expect a close one on the varsity level, too. It's Wyzetta and Hill Murray, and it comes your way next here on CCX Sports. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. And welcome back here to Aldrich Arena for Saturday matinee hockey as Wyzetta and Hill Murray get set to drop the puck here. 
Got some cold weather coming, but actually a pretty nice day out today as the fans file in for this one. And Wyzetta hoping to come up with a big road victory here this afternoon as in the middle of their pile there will be uh, Julia Kimlinger, the junior, getting the starting nod for the Trojans. Let's see what she's done so far. As the Trojans getting set to face Edina Tuesday, too. And there is a look at the other end, Rachel Kennedy. Yes, we've got a 4-3-1 record. You see, as Dan pointed out in the pregame there, they've continued to be stingy with goals and playing a lot of tough teams, and they've still managed to limit even the really good teams. Edina scored three, but one of them was an empty netter the other night. So yeah, pretty much both teams, their losses were basically one-goal differentials. Uh, lost to Edina 3-1. Hill Murray did the other night, but it was an empty net goal at the end. But, boy, they, they give around 20 to 21 shots up per game, which is a phenomenal number. So they really shut down the opposition to play good defense. And uh, it's just a question of scoring now. Hill Murray comes in with four goals a game and uh, five goals a game for Wyzetta. Shea Stinnett facing off against Sophie Urban of Wyzetta. Urban wins the draw, and we are underway as the Trojans... In their road blues, dump it on in. Sarah Luger relaying it around, and then the cross rink pass a little behind Beldy. Chopped away by Urban and controlled now by Sloan Matthews, and she'll dump it into the Pioneer zone as Urban hustles after it, but Pioneers get there first. Couldn't quite get it out, though. Matthews picking it up in the circle, but good job by Luger to jump in and break that up. Luger will swing it around to Ali Franco, the talented sophomore defenseman who's already committed to Minnesota. A long pass there is a little too long, though. Icing call coming up as they tried to spring Ava Stinnett. And both teams will get a chance to change up their personnel here, get one good shift in, and now uh, the icing call will bring us back into the Hill-Murray zone. Got a good look at Sloan Matthews, number 32 of the Trojans there, trying to do a little puck dangling. Had it taken off her stick, but... You know, she's been a two-year veteran, and she's only a sophomore, and uh, she'll be one to watch today, too. She's got some great moves, and she can put the puck in the net. Branton circling behind, trying to drop it off there for Mallory Coffin. Addie Hackley pinching in to keep that puck in the zone. Now the Pioneers get a little room, though, and then intercepted near center by Sarah Dolan for Wyzetta, thrown back into the Pioneers zone. They're able to get the breakout going up the left side. Dumped in behind and giving chase. Olivia Boyer will get to it. Puts it out Ooh. front, and that one deflects just wide. Another centering pass is tapped out of there by Sophie Heyer for Wyzetta. Pass ahead there, reaching Nina Steigoff, and she'll relay it in and head off on a change here. Puck jumps away. Pioneers gain control. Nice reversal to get it up ice and played in up their right wing side as Delaney Fabian dumped it in deep. And then Fabian got the puck back briefly. Pioneers coming in strong on the forecheck there, but Trojans now able to get it on out. And they're looking to get a line change, so good discipline play there to just dump it on in and head off. Hustling back after it, McKenna Hartle. Around the horn it comes now to Ruby Moss. Dumped on in deep again. Fight for it along the wall and the Pioneers will come up with it as Beldy working her way up ice. Chopped at a little bit, throws it in deep. As we were talking before the game, Beldy, that's what she does so well. She just carried it out and got a breakout out of the zone just by carrying it. Those are some of the things that she does that are important and valuable. Intercepted by Franco as they tried to clear it. Now pushed down along the wall. Beldy fell but gets right back up trying to put it out front. Centering pass here deflected away. Beldy almost had a try at it there but the Trojans in position and able to make the play defensively. Both teams really kind of looking to do the same. Dump the puck in and go forecheck real strong. Choke off some of those uh, breakout passes. Like oh. that. Oh, and then just over skated as Olivia Boyer picked it off. 
Trojans able to get it out to center. Moss controlling there, but then intercepted. A nice, strong step up. Opportunity up the left side, and the shot fired there by Kristen Kaufman for Hill Murray. Now the Trojans getting it out, but good read by Steigoff to get there, and she'll send it back to her D as they look to spring it back up ice. Tapped away there by Addie Hackley, and now here come the Trojans. Branton, a two-on-one in close. Oh, and there is Kennedy being asked to make her first big save of the game as Branton had a pretty close-in opportunity there for the Trojans. Great playmaking in the passing by the Trojans down front there. Use the uh, offside winger to use a fake and got an open shot on Kennedy. She really had to step up and make a good save. Trojans get it out again, and here comes Branton looking to go up the right side. Couldn't get around the D, though. Back out to center and tapped ahead that they were offside on the play. As they kind of said, I'll take the offside winger. It's all yours, Rachel, and she was able to get it done as Branton tried to go 5 all and almost got it through. Well, if, that's for the, if I had to pick a person on the team to shoot for Rizzo, she's the one. Puck move has been really good here on both teams' part. They really move the puck well to each other. That one thrown on net from a shallow angle there by Kennedy Morris. Yeah, there isn't a lot of time with the puck for any individual player for the most part. You're seeing the puck, quick passes. They always got their head up and they're looking. And the way Hilmer I like too, the head man, if they don't go side to side looking for the far wing, they go up the ice with it with vertical passes and uh, it's worked so far with them getting in the zone. Turnover here for Wyzetta. Beldy shooting, but nice job defensively to block it by Ali Scoro. Now pass across ice does not connect and Wyzetta trying to complete a quick change as Hill Murray charges back the other way. Overskated by Matthews there and dumped on in to the Trojan zone. Back out toward the point and sent back to the corner by Amelia Jutz. Nice job by the linesman to duck, <laughs> duck out of the way of that one. <laughs> Trojans able to keep it in as Matthews pushes it toward the corner. And it's jab free. Matthews up with it. Pass trying to go out front to Urban, but well read defensively by the Pioneers. And now here comes Beldy. Beldy's alone for the moment. Brings it to the middle and then jabbed away from her by Urban. And flip back to center where Sarah Luger is up with it. She'll dump it right back in. No score on the board. A little under 11 minutes to play in the first period here. Why Zeta number seven in the AA rankings. Hill Murray number nine. And this one pumped out to center again. Luger comes up with it. Drops the pass off there, and Franco will send it ahead, and then relayed on in by Gracie 70. You can see how well both teams shut down lanes and stuff and play good defense. Everything's being pushed to the outside. Boys, that is the only one that got a really good opportunity in front. Turnover here, and the shot. Oh, and the rebound hacked at as it was dropped by Kimlinger. She tried to glove that point shot from Franco. And now another opportunity for oh. the Pioneers and a swing and a miss. That pass came across the crease and 70 was unable to get a stick on it. So right when you were saying there, why well, had the only really good chance that probably the best opportunities there for Hill Murray. Yep. Nice stick handling here to the front, a shot. Ooh, and Kimmler had to make a tough save on Steigoff there. And back out it comes, relayed right back in by Franco. Trojans, nice break out there, and then that one is interrupted, though, as oh. the pass was a little behind. And we're going to get a penalty coming yep. up against Wyzetta here. As coming up ice was Ella Housie, and she was kind of bear-hugged a little bit there. Housie made a nice stand-up play at the blue line, though. You couldn't have textbook that better. You can watch her make a stop, and she runs back up the ice, and it gets pulled down. And uh, I like the way the Hill Murray defense also go out, and once they stop the puck, they get up the ice real quick with it. Either to put an outlet pass or just roll with it. Best breakout there is, Jay, is one good person carrying the puck. Christine Peterson will pick up the penalty for the Trojans, so power play chance here for Hill Murray, and that shot deflecting just wide. Well, 
hooking will be the call as there's the save by Kimlinger and she's able to pounce on that rebound and cover it up. So, as we said, good puck movement really by both teams here. And now we'll get a yep. chance to see how that looks with a five on four. And they did a nice job getting it down but Kimlinger shutting the door on that first opportunity of this uh, power play for Hill Murray. Now they lose it and hammered down the rink. Nice job there, Addie Hackley, not gonna waste any time, just get to it and send it all the way down. Well, the Pioneers have scored five power play goals in 26 attempts for about a 19% effective rate, but they're moving the puck really well right now. Matthews getting a stick to block that shot. Back out high, it comes again. And they look weak side for the tip, but it just didn't quite connect. Back out top again. Here's a shot that's hammered wide by Kennedy Morris. Urban trying to put some pressure on that pass. They come back out to Morris again. Morris trying to get a tip out front and went off Hackley's skate. It'll come right back to Morris. Back out to the point, fought off by Kimlinger. Puck laying loose for a moment, then the Trojans get it and clear it. Nice job to not panic out front there by Urban as she had to kind of reach back for that puck but stayed with it and got it down the rink. Well, the Trojans have given up seven goals on 28 power plays for uh, killing it off about a 75% rate. It needs to be a little bit better, right up about 80%. So kind of the weak spot specialty teams here for both teams are showing up here. Carried in by Franco. Under 15 to go in the power play here for Hill Murray. Back oh. out top. Puck just snuck away. Calling for it. Oh, and shot to Tempai Steigoff. Nearly went. She was open in that circle and let her teammates know. Now it comes out front again. Steigoff the shot. Rebound is loose. Kimlinger reaching for it. It's in. Hill Murray will strike just as the penalty had ended. I don't think it'll end up being a power play goal, but it comes basically right on the heels of that power play goal, and Steigoff is going to get it, it looks like. Getting her seventh goal of the year, the leading scorer right now, and she caused all the havoc in front that started it, and Rosetta just couldn't get a grip on that puck and get it out of there. You'll see Steigoff right in front of the net there or getting it on the net and then driving in and helping put, put it away. Yeah, it actually looks like it bounced off Olivia Boyer, right, yeah. too, so she probably should get that goal. I don't know. We'll see how they officially award it. Yeah, I might think number nine might have got, should have got that. She was the closest one to it. Well, they're going to give it to Steigoff. So not a power play goal, but obviously still had a lot of effect of that power play on there as it actually kind of wound up going in, I think, off Kimlinger ultimately, but it did hit, appear to hit Boyer in front as well. But we'll see if they change that one eventually. Not a big deal, but uh, Steigoff had a good shift and gets it. Here's another look as you see it clearly hits uh, Boyer as well. And then it actually yeah, it is the skate of Kimlinger that kind of pushed it in. Shot at 10 block, ooh, and there was thoughts of a breakaway the other way there after it was blocked by Anna Veselovic. Hackley does a nice job yes. shielding off the four checker there. Trojans breaking it out nicely up the left side. Sarah Dallin sending it in deep. Chop back down toward the corner, relayed out front, but well read by the D. Now this shot attempt mostly blocked by Hill Murray. Hackley playing it back down. Branton relaying it around. And sent out, and we'll see if this one ends up having enough on it. Nope, nope. not going to be an ice. Later in the period here, it slows down. A little snow on the ice. Tipped into the Hill Murray zone there by Sophia Bach. Well, as this pain according to trends, the first period tends to be Wyzetta's worst period. They get better as the game goes on. Hill Murray, first period generally the better period out of all of them. So with a 1-0 lead, that's kind of showing true right now for the Pioneers. 
Long pass ahead and tipped, and there's an opportunity on a partial break, and Kimlinger able to get a piece of that Boyer shot. As they caught Lizetta, it's really one of the first times that either team's been caught like that. Nice pass relayed up the wing and then tipped ahead right to the line. Good discipline to stay on side on that play, too, for Hill Murray. Well, you can tell they do that. Ver- that's where that vertical passing comes in, Jay. It's a set play. They, they probably practice that all the time and uh, got a good opportunity out of it. Sent back in. And, yeah, and it's a nice thing to have the vision and the skill mm-hmm. to be able to execute that where you're not just focused on I've got a four checker on me here. I've got to go with the shortest uh, pass that may or may not really bring you up ice anywhere. Tipped ahead now and an opportunity for the Trojans. Got on net there. And Kennedy able to make a stop. Another look at this little partial breakaway here. Still got a good shot out. That wasn't that bad an angle. She got a little bit more control of it earlier. She might have had an even better opportunity. But, boy, nice play set up. Smart by the Pioneers. And the defenseman got back just enough to cut off, you know, any opportunity to maybe do something else with that. That was pretty much the only play was to take the shot from there. But still a pretty good chance for Hill Murray. Boy, Sophie Urban was set up right in front there real quick. Just didn't quite get to her. She's ready to pull the trigger. Well, Izetta had a lot of offensive zone possession time early in this period, but, you know, you're thinking back to the last five, six, seven minutes, not really too much. Here's Urban looking to send it out front again, and she picks it up again. Urban will slide it back out high. Point shot Ooh. there, and the deflection trickles wide as Kennedy scrambles back into her net. All of a sudden, it's Wyzetta putting on some pressure on this shift. That shot attempt is blocked. Matthews dropping it off there, and there's a shot that's blocked out front. Scoro this time will send it down deep. Picked up again by Matthews. Fires, and Kennedy gets the catching glove down to grab that one. And a faceoff coming with 3.30 to go in the first period as Hill Murray leading it by a score of one to nothing. I like the way the Trojans were massing in front of that net. Boy, they were really in the grill of the goaltender for Hill Murray there a number of times. And uh, I like it when they got it out top to the D and that opened things up so they could actually get some shots down in there. And I think a lot of times there's that's something that's, you know, you learn as you get older and more experienced that a lot of these players are good enough that coming up they can probably score a lot of you know skill goals just by being better than the other but you learn that you need to get some of those deflections you need to bother that other team's goaltender you need to be willing to take a little shot in the back or yep. in the legs from the defenseman too <laughs> it's not always the most fun thing but i think that's what you know the the top coaches are able to build into their teams is that that to beat good teams, you're going to need to do some of those things as well. They're not all going to be pretty two-on-one or three-on-two goals. Well, everybody up here now is good, a little bit more equal on your level than when you were moving up, so now all of a sudden your stars aren't that much of a star. you got to do the little things. Push back out to center. Addie Hackley will grab it. And thrown in as the Trojans will finish off a change. Nice passing around the horn here, coming to 70 for Hill Murray, but taken from her. Trojans looking oh. to break it out. Nice pass there and a race for it. Well, number two, Sarah Luger there for the Pioneers. Really nice pinch off there. She was about to get beat, and she just got her body in the right position. Nice job. Little tip. Now an opportunity coming up ice. And Franco couldn't turn the corner on the defenseman there. Under two to play here in this first period. Oh, that pass does not connect. Franco first to it, and she'll relay it right back in for the Pioneers. Puck tipped out to center. Franco intercepting. Tried to dump it in, but it was blocked. And now the Trojans able to send it in as they'll finish off a change here. Luger going back for it. Branton cuts her off. 
Luger trying to work it up the wall. They throw a quick two players at her there, but she stayed with it, got it to center anyway, and then intercepted by Hartle. Matthews will carry it in. And a long shot there, flipped, and Kennedy will make the catch on that one. So we get a whistle to stop play here. It's a little over a minute to go now in this first period, and Hill Murray leading it one to nothing. I almost said on a power play goal, Dan, obviously came <laughs> slightly after the power play had ended, but it was kind of more or less a continuation well, of the end of that power play. It set it up. You know, they already had people in the zone. Matthews Ooh. a shot and a pad save there by Kennedy. She got a good look at that one. And, Kick the pad out on a pretty decent opportunity there for Wyzetta. Kennedy's been really steady for them this year. They have uh, done a great job for the Pioneers just kind of putting it together and, and giving some steady goaltending. Yeah, Coach uh, said she's really, you know, kind of come into her own as a senior, and you like to see that. You know, sometimes you wait your turn a little bit. Oh, and Urban, just as she was about to shoot at her stick, lifted from behind there. Now the Pioneers getting a good... Rush late in the period. Pass coming across, and that one hits the outside of the net as Steigoff just had to reach for that pass. Urban coming up ice. She will relay it in. Olivia Housie back to it for Hill Murray. Smart. Pioneers reverse it behind the net. They just don't want to turn it over late in this period here, and they almost did. Couple seconds to go, that shot attempt blocked, and the period will come to an end. So an exciting first period of hockey, and the home team up by a goal here at the end of one. It is Hill Murray one, why is that a nothing? We'll have more from Aldrich Arena in a moment. for information on how to provide even better care for the person who once took care of you. Welcome back here, the home rink of Hill Murray. So you see the HM on the ice at Aldrich, the Pioneers leading Wyzetta by a score of one to nothing after one as we take a look at highlights from the opening period. A, a well-played period. Not necessarily a ton of great chances, but here's one early one. Branton denied there by a Rachel Kennedy. And then they pass across Steigoff and a swing and a miss. This one comes down low and a good save by Kimlinger. And another opportunity here and the stop, it bounces around eventually, unfortunately, Kimlinger ends up really knocking it in with her skate. And that was the only goal that came just after a power play ended. You'll see right here, watch her, she actually knocks it in with her herself with her pad or skate there. And Steigoff got credit for the goal. She was a shooter out top. You see the shots, just a one shot edge for Wyzetta. Slight edge and chances though for Hill Murray. The only penalty taken was by Wyzetta. And again, a little bit deceiving in that Hill Murray's 0 for 1 on the power play, but that goal came just seconds after the power play had ended. So it was kind of set up certainly by that power play. We'll get set for period number two here as these teams battle it out. Happy holidays from all of us at CCX Media. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. They both keep me motivated to go to school and they see that if I do it, like they can do it too, you know? I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org.
Hill Murray with a 1-0 lead as we get set for our second period here from Aldridge Arena. Jay Wilcox, Dan Ficken with you here on CCX Sports as Wyzetta, a solid first period. Got a yep. few chances. Yep. I don't think there was anything to, to hang your head about. They get outscored by one goal, but uh, they're, they're certainly still feeling pretty good about the way things went for them, I think, in that first period. Well, the good news is the adjustments between the first and second have been enormous. They have outshot the other team in the second period or scored. 18 goals versus their opponent, six. So this is the period where they really get it going. So we'll see if they can do that to the Pioneers here. Rush up ice here. Beldy cut off, drops the pass out front. Now it comes out high. That shot attempt never really got anywhere. Here's Franco, a drive. Blocker saved there by Kimlinger. Now back out to center and Franco. Nice pass right across to Beldy. Good vision of the ice there. Beldy a shot, and Kimlinger will make the stop and hang on. So we get a faceoff coming up in the Trojan zone. Well, the Pioneers have really impressed me with the way they've been moving the puck, Jay, especially that last pass there from Frank. Oh, my gosh. Wide ice, and it had a little tempo on it. Wasn't going to get picked off. Pioneers control the draw and get it set up in the offensive zone. Tried to send it out front, but too many bodies there. Now Branton will wind up with it for Wyzetta. Pass deflected and then hammered right back in by Kennedy Morris. Stepping up was Housie to keep that puck alive. Now picked up by Addie Hackley, and then a nice breakout here for the Trojans. Trying to spring Branton. She had to wait for that one a little bit. Centering pass knocked away, but control gained, put out front, and they jab at it, and the net has come off, actually, as Kennedy was scrambling to try and block that one. Mallory Coffin looking out front there, and Mizetta doing a nice job getting a, generating a chance there. Really great puck movement from one end of the neutral zone to the other side corner to it, and they uh, didn't quite get it smooth, but they got down there and got a good opportunity in front. Off the draw, controlled there by Urban. Almost got a good setup there out of it. Urban in there digging hard for the puck. Now putting it out front. Oh. Nice play to break that one up, and Boyer was actually knocked down and got back up and played it up ice there. That little shows how it matters to be strong on your skates there. Boyer likes sticking her nose in it too. She was the one in front of the net on the Hill Murray goal, and uh, she ain't afraid to get down there and get dirty like you were talking about earlier. Off of Fabian's stick, racing hard up the right wing. Delaney Fabian getting to it here for Hill Murray. But the wing that she was trying to get it to was going off on a change there, or actually it was Steigoff. Now dropped back, and the shot attempt there from Heyer is blocked. Trojans getting it set up here. Tried to work a little give and go, but that pass was blocked. Now Pioneers able to work it out up their left side. The Slavich will Dump it on in as they finish a change. Scoro back to get it here for Wyzetta. Scoro gets it back and will lift it in along the dasher board there. Pioneers tried to reverse it, but nobody home, so it's a race for it in the corner. Now Beldy trying to work it out. Couldn't quite do it. Scoro sending it back down deep. Luger back to play it. Moisetta backing out of the zone as they were finishing a change there, and then a nice interception. Scoro went down hard. Jab loose at center. Boy, you don't find a whole lot of room to make decisions with the puck against either nope. of these teams, do you? <laughs> nope. They keep their spacing really good, and the other thing I like about it, too, is they get up and get going. They don't stand there or hesitate. They get their feet moving real quick to get the puck going the other way. 
Banked ahead, but didn't have the uh, right angle on that bank pass. And tip loose. And now an opportunity for the Pioneer oh. shot and a goal. Steigoff just off the bench really was able to pounce. And you could see she had momentum coming forward as she was skating, you know, pretty much at full speed where the D had to try to change direction and get going again. And she comes in alone and buries it for her second goal of the game, an eighth of the season. And it's 2-0 Hill Murray. Yeah, she goes short high, short side high here. Really acceleration right through here. And then just goes up top, finds the right spot. Nice shot, too, by the way. That, that was right on the net. Pretty. Hackley got caught in a tough spot there as she was battling for the puck at the blue line with, I think it was Boyer. And then there was Steigoff to jump in. And Steigoff, as I said, you know, she was already pretty much to full speed. She had just come off the bench. Now an opportunity as they try to get it to Urban out front, and it's banked on out. It's going to be an icing call here against the Pioneers. Well, the two places you really don't want to turn the puck over is within five feet of each blue line. Because generally the person coming through has got to jump, just like Stigo did there. Like you said, Jay, she was pretty much up to full speed when she got it and got around that last remaining D and got in pretty much all alone, pretty much to the side, but then she buried it. It will be an unassisted goal as it came off of the defenseman Hackley's stick. And Boyer, you know, doesn't get an assist officially there, but she certainly was a part of that by pressuring Hackley there, I think, too. Here's a pass that gets away, and they're able to get a shot blocked, though, as Sammy Hackley attempted to put one on net there for Wyzetta. Boy, nice reverse there by the Pioneers. Boy, and they do it so quickly. Here's an opportunity out front. Oh, and it just gets away. And then a puck deflecting loose in the slot. Try to get it oh. to Branton, and then Kennedy a save. As Mallory Coffin was in the middle there, and they had a good opportunity. That was one of the few, you know, turnovers that really hurt Hill Murray. And then see the pass they tried it they did it actually get it through to Branton that's pretty good vision because you know normally when you get the puck that close you're just thinking shoot 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 and yep. they could see Branton was alone and they actually did get it to her and she got a shot on that but Kennedy was in the right spot well, they had a little bit of unluck puck too there he just kept bouncing on they couldn't get a good solid hit on it Beldy working her way through the back checker there oh. comes to the point with it for Housie So that's what Beldy works for. You see that hustle? She took care of the puck. She got it to the right person. Long shot there, banking off the end boards and almost resulted in a chance on the rebound. Now the Pioneers get it back again, put it out Ooh. front. Ooh, and that one, that was one of those tough, tough ones where the defenseman stick nearly, you know, put a redirection on goal. Now it comes to Beldy in the circle, firing, but too high with that one. Trojans reeling a little bit on this shift right now, trying to get the puck out. Long pass ahead, trying to get it to Branton, but that one was rather easily intercepted. Shot on net, thrown there by Jutz. Jutz gets it back as Hill Murray finishing a change. They have come out strong here in this second period. They've gotten the only goal, but they've also just played very well, too. Well, Kimlinger here, she started deflecting that, should have got a freeze, because these the Trojans are getting tired. They've been there a long time, and there's well, not an icing. And Branton was going to be first there, so Kennedy decides to cover that one. Another look at this one. There's the one that I thought, oh, it might go off the defenseman stick as Scoro was able to block it. That's where you that's where stick angle oh. makes a whole lot of difference there. If you if you've got it nice and flat, you have a chance to block that. That's a nightmare for a defense. Relayed right back into the Pioneer zone. Wyzetta trying to get something going here. Had a couple of good chances a moment Ooh. ago. Oh, and Kennedy has that one. Uh, t talking stick angle for the defenseman. There was one where she had that one angled back just a little bit, and it crawled up her stick and gave her a little bit of difficulty there on what really wasn't too much on this puck, obviously. She almost deflected that one past herself. We'll see if the Trojans can answer back now. A little bit of a dominant situation in the Hill Murray zone. Puck thrown high and wide there by Hartle. 
And then tipped out and an opportunity for two on one for Hill Murray. Oh, and it's just a little behind 70. Tried to kick it to her stick, but it didn't quite work out. I think Wyzetta may be a little fortunate to not pick up a penalty there. Yep. Uh, interference or, or maybe even a check as they tried to play the puck around the D. One thing I'm noticing here, the Pioneers can skate. I mean, they've got oh, some yeah. powerful skaters, especially on the wings. And uh, they've been really pushing on the Trojan defense here, stretching them a little bit. And uh, it's creating some opportunities for them. Yeah, it's really, you know, probably not all that many teams that Wyzetta will play that you'll say this other team skates just as well or better than them. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's looking like the case here so far. Battle for it down in the corner again, and pass intercepted. Now the Pioneers able to get it on out as Kristen Kaufman carrying it. Sends it in deep as she took a little bump. It's been kind of a let them play type game. We've had just that one penalty taken by Wyzetta, but I think in a good way. Uh, you know, both oh, yeah. teams playing good clean hockey. Well, that could have been towards the body check, but no force is put in it. She's just stopped the player from moving forward. Oh. Sent back behind the net. Luger gets to it. You can see why Zeta's kind of stepped up the intensity. They're feeling, uh, you know, that they need to really come on strong and answer what Hill Murray's done so far. But so far, it's not really generating a lot of chances. A lot of heads down. They got to get their heads up. When they get the puck, they got to know where somebody is. A blind pass really hurt them there behind the net. Beldy bringing it into the oh. Wyzetta zone. Fights through a back check there. Beldy trying to get it high in the circle there to Ava Stanet. Now sent around by Morris. Picked off there, but they can't get it out. Look at Ali Franco. Nice step up there to keep that one in. Then tipped around Franco and an opportunity the other way, but a nice job by Ava Stinnett getting back to back check there. And sent back into the Wyzetta zone as Hill Murray badly wanted to change there. But Wyzetta just can't get any clean ice to skate with. They just really can't, and Hill Murray's creating some openings by their skating. Halsey working it in deep to the corner, then the back pass went past her. Yeah, you're right, Wyzetta, just, there isn't a lot of room in there. Not always maybe picking the right avenues to try and bring it up ice either. They're being frustrated a little bit on their breakout attempts and even just through neutral. Send ahead into the Wyzetta zone. 70 chasing it down but beaten to it there by Wyzetta's coffin. Now tipped ahead and this one's gonna come to Kennedy and she'll just cover it up as Chasing in hard was Peterson after it. Peterson took a little bump for her efforts there. 6.55 to go in the middle period. Hill Murray scored once in the first. They've added one more in the second, both by Nina Steigoff, the Quinnipiac recruit. They're gonna get a good one there. She's a player. Trojans able to come out of there with it. <laughs> Not for long, and a battle now along the wall on the other side. And a collision sends two Trojans down, and the shot from the point goes wide. Puck popping free now, and an opportunity for the breakout for Hill Murray. Oh, and they try to go to 70. Just couldn't quite find it as the pass was really right at her feet. And they waved off the icing. Ooh. Carried on out by Urban. Urban sending it in here for Wyzetta. Yeah, you know, the good news about this game for the Trojans too is like this. This is this looks like late conference hockey right here. You know, there's a lot of movement, a lot of puck movement, good skating, hard shooting, good goaltending. That deflected shot flutters up high, and Kennedy, obviously it wasn't really going to be on that, but not going to take any chances on any weird bounces there. She'll just glove it down and hang on and get a face-off here in the Pioneer zone. Matthews out to take the draw for Wyzetta, but it's controlled there by Shea Stinnett. Nice job to pick it off at the line, though, by Schindler. Puts it out front. Here's there a chance go. for Matthews. And a rebound go. is in. Sophie so Urban good. knocks it home, and Wyzetta's on the board. 
Sophie Urban with her 10th goal of the year for the Trojans. She's been on a tear lately. She's got three power play goals already. And, uh, how many years is she? What, what was her contract? Was that a 10-year contract? For her <laughs> She's been around a long time, she hasn't, hasn't she? It. There's Matthew shot save. Kennedy a save, maybe two, but then Urban stuck with it and is able to pump it home. And Wyzetta to within two to one. Well, this line of Branton and Matthews and Urban has been their big scoring line. They're the top three scorers in the team, and boy, they needed them to get out the schneid here and got them back within one goal. Let's see if this charges the Trojans up. Matthews will get the lone assist on the goal for Urban at 11-19 of the second. So a two to one score now in favor of the Pioneers. You know, Murray able to get the puck in deep here. Fabian sending it across, but nobody home. Branton up with it. And that one will hop over everyone. So no icing there. Puck was deflected. Tip loose and the defenseman got caught up ice a little bit there. Wyzetta was kind of fortunate that that one didn't result in a chance. Carried in and the shot goes off the outside of the net there from Sammy Hackley. Now an opportunity. Oh, and Kennedy making a save as they got a, another pretty good shift going for Wyzetta. They've kind of turned the ice in their favor a little bit here in these last three, four minutes. Have a look at that shot from Sarah Adolin as a good clean attempt. Clearing pass intercepted. Another step up to keep that one in and, and Kennedy juggles it a little bit. Suddenly the, it's the Pioneers finding it not so easy to get out of their zone as it looked like for a while there. <laughs> A lot of times that first goal is the great energizer bunny for heaven's sakes and gets you rolling and you're back in your game. You got your confidence back. Oh. Just little things like that. Don't try and bring it back. Just go ahead and fire toward the net. Look too much futzing around there. Came off a stick odd. Played back down to the corner, but it hops through. Morris relaying it around. And played back to center, but then no further. And here's a chance for Boyer coming in, fires, and Kimlinger out to meet her. And put out front, and Kimlinger will grab it, and then bodies collide out front. But things quickly separate. Boy, there was a pretty good opportunity yeah. there. And then that pass out front was dangerous. I like the end of this, too, though. They, you know, they... they Kept her away from their goalie, but neither player, you know, they just kind of broke it up uh, quickly on their own there. And I think that's the one thing that's fun about playing other good teams too, though, is, you, you know, some teams know that the only way they're remotely going to stay with you is by tripping you and hacking you and that kind of thing. And, ooh, that one snuck through and Kimling are a pad save where these teams can kind of match each other skill level for skill level. Yes. Yep. They know what to do with the puck. They move it well. They've had some set plays and stuff they use and they're skating, they just cover ice. Tipped loose, race for it here, back to get oh. it as Morris, and a great little pivot to get away. 70 trying to play it around the defenseman, but Sammy Hackley was having none of it. Trojans trying to dump it back in, and now eventually do here as we go under three minutes to play in the second, and a two to one lead for Hill Murray, but Wyzetta got the last goal and have come on strong since. Here's Branton picking it up, but jabbed away from her. Ooh, and then a nice step up by Sammy Hackley, or that one might have been a breakaway the other way. But now the Pioneers do get a chance. Ava Stinnett sliding the pass across. Beldy is denied by Kimlinger. Big save right there. Big difference. Kimlinger came out and knocked down that angle, boy. He didn't let him have that short side high shot. Took it right away from a great play by her. Beldy now throwing one on net. And that was a really nice pass by Stinnett, yes, too, it was. wasn't it? I mean, just right on the tape to see her from that far across the rink and put it exactly where it needed to be, that was impressive. But the, the goaltender even more impressive. Here's a rebound trying it in. Hill Murray does now score. 
as put away by Ava Stinnett on the rebound. So just after they get a near miss, they come back and put pressure back on Kimlinger and Nett. You'll see the puck thrown on net here, then kicks the rebound loose, but Shea, uh, Ava Stinnett able to bury it. Shea Stinnett will get the assist. At, uh, maybe there'll be more than one, but she took that initial shot. Eighth goal of the year for Ava. Good leading scorer in the team, junior. So that momentum that Wyzetta had been gathering is taken away there. That was just a good disciplined positioning goal for the Pioneers. I mean, they got it down deep. They got Stanette standing in front. She didn't move her situation. She stayed there, and she got that puck in a good situation to bury it. So the Pioneers answer that goal to take a two-goal lead again. Well, they call the assist Beldy and Jots, but it seemed pretty clear that Shea Stanette had taken that previous shot, but... Regardless, it's a uh, third goal for the Pioneers. Controlled here through center as they try to send it to 70 up the left side. Matthews back to play it. And Branton tried to make a move around the D but couldn't quite do it. We're under a minute to go in the period. Franco pursued heavily there by the Trojans Branton. Now Urban up with it. Urban sliding it across all alone in front is Matthews and a blocker save there on the backhander. Matthews putting it out front. Now Branton dropping the pass back. Shot will sail wide though. Matthews getting over to it. Ooh, look at that. Now a nice breakout pass here. Oh. Ava Stanette having trouble controlling it. Now does play it around the D. Throws it out front. Uh-oh, did that one sneak under? It looks like it did. It's a goal for the Pioneers Ooh. as Kimlinger had to get underneath her. The referee was not in, you know, expecting that, so he wasn't down there to really be able to see it. But I kind of got the feeling by the way <laughs> that Kimlinger was reacting that that oh. probably was behind her. And it will be another goal for the Pioneers, and that one hurts. There you see Beldy signaling, and they're all looking around, and there is the referee coming into the picture, and he finally says, yep, indeed it is in. Oh, boy. Well, Kimberly's going to want, to want that one back. She's going to think about that one all night. It'll be Ava Stanette again. Well, it's funny how these scores on these teams, the top three or four, they, uh, for some reason, that puck finds its way to the back of the net for them, even at odd angles. So big, big goal here at the end of the period for the Pioneers to take a three-goal lead. This is going to be a tough one for the Trojans. They're going to have to really put it on in the third period here. So a four-to-one lead for Hill Murray. We will take a timeout and come back with more hockey here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. Zamboni completing its work here at Aldrich Arena. 4-1 to lead for Hill Murray over Wyzetta. The second period was kind of an interesting one as uh, the Pioneers striking first in the period as we check out some highlights from that second. And we'll eventually get to what uh, they did late in the period as well. Here's Steigoff pouncing on a loose puck at the blue line, showing why she's one of the better players in the Twin Cities. Walking in and pumping her second of the game home at 4.01. So that point, 2 nothing. Hill Murray looked pretty good. Then Wyzetta came on. They get a chance here. Kennedy making a stop in close on Branton's opportunity. And then uh, an opportunity there kicked aside by Kimlinger. And then the puck will come out. 
crawling up Kennedy's arm a little bit, but she's able to stay with that one. And then here's uh, the chance why Zeta gets that finally goes in as Urban stayed with it after Matthews was stopped and she scored. And they had the momentum, but then that kind of went away as the rebound goal by Ava Stanett. And then the one that really hurt, I think, yeah, late here is this puck thrown out front and watch it, it'll just deflect off a skate and then gets underneath Kimlinger. It went off the defenseman's skate and kind of trickled its way in. So shots pretty even through two periods, a slight edge for Hill Murray, and they've got a little edge in the chances too, and still just that one penalty in the first period of play. We said these teams are top 10 teams, and uh, when you look at the rankings so far, Andover's got a really nice club, Edina. That's who Wyzetta plays next is Edina. And the Tonka, obviously, another Lake Conference team, and uh, Blake. Eden Prairie, another team in the lake, and uh, Maple Grove is coming up on the schedule before long for Wyzetta as well here, and they're having a very nice season. So a lot of the, lot of the usual suspects, but a couple of new faces kind of breaking their way into that uh, rankings as well. Well, the last time we were at Aldrich Arena for a event telecast, watch what happens. Hill Murray against Maple Grove boys last <laughs> week, and whoops, or last season, I should say. Is the skate coming up, and uh, that was a memorable night for that reason. It was a delay of, I guess, what, 20, 25 minutes, something like that, while they were able to, to get it repaired. You see it happen, but not terribly often. I think it's a night that probably the guys on both teams will sort of remember for that one a little bit, Dan. And obviously it's, it's in good shape right now. Yeah, I'm thinking, and let's hope it stays that way, too. We don't want to see any more of that. It makes just a huge mess, but usually it's a body that's shattering the glass or dislodging it. I've never seen a skate punch through. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Yeah, that was interesting. So we are just about set for period number three. The teams will be out for warm-ups in a moment. We'll take a timeout and come back with our third period of hockey here as Wyzetta tries to rally from a 4-1 deficit. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. They both keep me motivated to go to school and they see that if I do it, like they can do it too, you know? I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Ava Stinnett scored the last two goals for Hill Murray after her teammate Nina Steigoff had gotten the first two, so they have combined for all four of the goals for the Pioneers. Although I guess it kind of um, you know, benefits of some bounces on, on for you know one of them had each of that happened for them where they kind of bounced around off a of skate and that type of thing, but they all count the same. Thrown back out as Puck will skitter back into the Wyzetta zone. Scoro back to play it here for the Trojans. And then that Oops. second pass intercepted at center. Hilmer's done a really nice job of that. That pass banked ahead a little too far. Now dumped in and Matthews giving chase there.
Pioneers get control back. Ooh, and then a big collision there. And I think it truly was just a collision. Neither player really was intending to knock the other over. They just ran into each other. But that thing I'm noticing too, Hill Murray's defense is mobile. They, they have this way of getting the puck and getting moving. They don't stand still. They keep moving all the time. And it creates openings for them. They made some really good passes on breakouts. Yeah, I like how they're decisive with the puck, yep. too, when they get it. Oh, a great move here. Here's Steigoff, a shot, and a big save by Kimlinger. That one might have been the one that could keep them in the game because if they fall any farther behind, they're really in trouble. And Steigoff, looking for the hat trick, was in pretty much alone there. That was one pioneer you didn't want to see bearing down on you. That's got to help Kimlinger's confidence right now. Yeah, she's made some big saves, yeah. and then just a little bit of bad luck on a couple, and you know maybe gave up a bigger rebound than she would have liked to on Stanette's first goal there too. But I think uh, you know a lot of for the most part those haven't really been her fault. Uh -oh. Now the puck lost at the blue line, and an opportunity back the other way. Steigoff gets knocked down. <laughs> oh, nice play. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know what to check if not that though. Force, yeah. force of hit. Throwing up the middle, bounces around, and Pioneers had it briefly. Now push back in, Morris giving chase. Morris throwing it out front, oh, and it handcuffed her teammate uh, Fabian. Now thrown toward the net, but blocked there by Sammy Hackley. They ring it around. And it does get back out to center. <laughs> Good eyes by Lucy's up for there. She was going to throw that pass across to her partner and then realized there was a Trojan yep. who was right there. <laughs> and she was able to kind of hold back and stop her hands from sending that puck into a turnover. But that, you know, Jay, you made a really good point there. That I love the way the Pioneers always have their head up. They don't make blind, dumb passes. They know where they're going with the puck. And if it ain't there, it ain't there. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing that that's kind of the... The last evolution, I think, of some of those is you know your systems really well. You can do it without thinking about it. However, if it isn't there, then you have to alter the plan a little bit, and that's exactly what we saw right there. Yeah, and when you play the better team, sometimes it ain't there. And sometimes it isn't there from one period to the next if yeah. the other team's coaches are, are doing a good job too. So they, you, know, you, you make those little in-game adjustments. And, okay, here's what they're doing on the breakout. Here's what we need to do to, to choke that off. And... You'll see that switch throughout the game. There we go. Nice pass across. Matthews with speed up the right side. Matthews to the net and stopped by Kennedy. Boy, that was a good rush by Matthews. She just couldn't, you know, close the deal on it. Kennedy made a nice save. Boy, he's had an easy one here, and they need one here pretty quick. Yeah, Matthews showing really good speed because it didn't look like she necessarily was going to be able to get by the defenseman there, but she just had good skating stride but to give uh, you know Kennedy credit she st stood her ground there and made that stop Trojans regrouping now and looking to break it out nice little fake pass there by Scoro but then they do not connect up cross ice for Coffin it will be an icing call here against the Trojans and we come back into the YZ zone here This is the farthest that Wyzetta has been down this year so far goal-wise. They've lost the two games. Uh, one goal difference between them. So this will be a real challenge and test for them right now. Yeah, I think their coaches, Williamson and Williamson, are you know be eager to see how they respond in this third period. Even if they don't you know, have time or enough to, to catch up, you still want to see your team kind of on an upswing in this third period. Well, considering who they have next on the lineup. Yes. The Dino Hornets. <laughs> yes. Back to the point. Boy, Dinah really put one on Breck last week, and uh, Jason Melillo from our staff was out shooting highlights of that, and wow, some skilled players for the Hornets. Shot there by Branton was mostly blocked. I believe Breck is rated number one in uh, 2A. In 1A, 1A. yeah. yeah. They, they, uh, they got it handed to them a little bit at Braemar, 6-1. Now Matthews up with it. That shot sailing wide. 
One thing Wyzetta I think maybe could stand to work on a little bit too is some of their, a lot of their shots have really been elevated. You know, not getting really good hard low yep. quality shots yep. on that could result in tips or rebounds. They've gotten some for sure, but too many are from outside have been just kind of high floaters. Uh, they need to get in, into a shooting area and shoot about 100 bucks a day. Just get those wrists really tightened up and strong. Hasn't been a lot of hard velocity on him either. Takes a bounce off a stick and it almost resulted in a great chance there. Now centering pass picked off. Here come the Trojans out of there with it. Sophie Heyer will send it in. They were changing behind her though, so not a lot of forecheck pressure early. Ooh, then nearly a giveaway. That pass deflecting off of the stick there of Fabian. Back out to center. Higher up with it there and sent back ahead. Back and forth it goes in front of the benches. Shea Stinnett, now they'll get it in deep. Stinnett going after it. You know, we've been noticing the difference here too, Jay, that when Hill Murray gets pucked, they're moving forward. We saw that last play move to Lice of the Trojan there. She just kind of hesitated because in those space wouldn't charge forward. She stopped and, oh, guess what? Long breakout pass here, but Heyer was at the end of a shift and just dumps it on in. That one deflected ahead. Steigoff waiting for help. Off Beldy skate, it comes right back to Steigoff and drops the pass back to the player just on the I-70, but then she goes down. Chopped away from Steigoff, and the Trojans able to come up with it here with now knocked away though, and Addie Hackley following up. Hackley plays it to herself. She has Branton with her on a two on oh. one, but just jabbed away. Good recovery on D there by Morris. Now put out front, Hackley winds up with it. To the point, and that one will hop over Karina Schindler's stick, and that one kind of sums up how it's been a little frustrating for Wyzetta down the stretch here, trying to desperately to generate chances. Been a lot of bouncing pucks that they've missed. And that pass picked off. Here we go. Sammy Hackley with the head of steam just off the bench. Hackley circling behind the net, puts it out front, and we hit off Kennedy's skate. And now the Pioneers able to break it out. That was interrupted by the second try. We'll get it in as they wanted to make a change as well. 9.25 to go in the hockey game. Four to one, Hill Murray leading Wyzetta. Trojans. 7-2 and two coming in, but facing an uphill battle here against a good team down by three here in the third. But obviously, a lot of time left. Anything can happen. They're capable of scoring goals for sure. But right now, Hill Murray's kind of got things going their way. Here come the Pioneers. Pass dropped off, and Fabian tried to put it out front. Matthews tipping it around the D, trying to go get it, but she was bumped a little bit there. Little traffic as Urban got in the way of that one and it's sent ahead at Wyzetta. Addie Hackley picking it up. That one nearly intercepted right near the blue line and a nice little move and an opportunity is coming in alone or partially alone. It was higher, but it goes wide. Nervous hands right there. Nervous hands skating so hard she just couldn't get a good generated shot and she missed the net. Beldy flicking that one in. Another look at this opportunity. Some good speed on the rush by Peterson and then throws it ahead. And yeah, just a sliding play by the D bothered her, but you're right, that one was kind of an opportunity miss there for Wyzetta. Yep, just didn't get it snapped off. Her hands got a little tight at the end there and just couldn't snap it off. And Kennedy's gonna cover this one up. Force another face off here. 8.06 to go in the third. So I'm kind of look at Wayzata's well, schedule here. Though? This might be second best team that they've played besides Blake. I know uh, World's pretty good in, in 1A, but that's their 1A. And I, I, you know, I was thinking to myself when looking at Hill Murray through these two plus periods, wow, I'd hate to see the team, the three teams that are better yeah. than them or that are good enough to beat them because they look really good to me. Yeah. 
Here's a drive and that one sailing wide. Sammy Hackley up with it. Tip behind the net. Well, here's what we're talking about. We're talking about Eden Prairie, Breck, and Edina. Oh, gee, those aren't good programs. Yeah, really. Now an opportunity here for the Trojans again. Schindler firing and Kennedy able to make the stop as it got up into that HM on her chest, but able to keep her eye on it and hang on, force another faceoff. Why, that has come on nicely yep, here. Yep. They're starting to generate more chances for sure. Now the next step is to see if they can, you know, at least get one to pull within a couple and give themselves an opportunity. I think it's got to come sooner rather than later if they're going to have a realistic chance to, to tie this up. Yeah, they're going to have to squeeze one by Kennedy here somehow, some way. Kennedy's looking real strong right now in the net. Pioneers couldn't oh. get it out. Urban having trouble getting control of it too, though. That, that's been the story right there. Why said it just cannot get their handle on the puck clean. Tipped ahead. Nice play there. Steigoff, a two-on-one opportunity. Threads the pass across. Oh, and Kimlinger making a tremendous stop there. Another golden opportunity. She's made two really big saves. She hasn't been tested maybe as much as the other periods, but two that very easily could have been goals and really gotten this one out of hand. But... She stood up and made plays. I think that's going to be you know, good for her confidence after oh. a, a strange bounce went in on the last goal of the second period. Well, she stopped Stigo Cole and, and basically right in on her, and then she got a clean two-on-one right there. Nice play by her. And you see, you know, Wyzetta's kind of bringing more bodies up ice to try and generate chances, so it, it's possible that, you know, that might happen again, another two-on-one, but... It's a gamble that you you know you kind of have to take to if you're going to press and try and get back in this one. Yeah, and here we had a nice rush and a good opportunity. Where was all the other Trojans? Though I saw two blue jerseys on there. There should have been at least three. You've got to generate and flow to the net to get some opportunities here. Down three goals. Collision there is pinching in with oh. Luger to keep that puck alive. Now trying to throw it out front. Another thing that we've mentioned about Hill Murray's D, I like, you know, they're they're being very wise about when to pinch in and when not to as well. Yep. yep. They know, and they're also getting some nice coverage behind them when they do. Hackley banking it ahead to Branton. Hill Murray trying to hurry up and finish a change. Oh, but a nice play. Boy, as a Franco kicked that puck loose, that one could have spelled trouble for them. They were out outnumbered about four to two as as the Pioneers' forward line was changing. But Franco interrupted that one single-handedly. Well, I like what the Georgians are doing here. They're forcing the play. They're floating somebody out in the neutral zone. So they're forcing that Hill Murray D back. Intercepted here. Ayer trying to get a chance there, but couldn't get around the D. And Kennedy is going to cover that one up. And Kennedy has been pretty decisive about that. She, yep. When in doubt, she's covering the puck. She has confidence, I guess, in her face-off personnel, but also just in, in her team defensively as well. And, and uh, you know, that's kind of a matter of preference. Some goalies really like to keep the buck moving at all times, and, but she has not shown any you know fear of, of freezing it and going from there. Put out front. Matthews a chance. Kennedy with a huge save. Matthews was alone in the slot and a good pass by Sammy Hackley to find her. Now here they come again. Just bounced away from Matthews, reeling it, trying to get it around to Urban. Urban digs it free. Oh, a nice little Shooting. move here. Here's that shot. It hits bodies in front. It's the attempt there from Moss. Now the Pioneers break it out, but intercepted by Sloan Matthews. Matthews coming back hard, firing, and a blocker save there by Kennedy. Kennedy's getting some work here in the third for sure. Well, this one will bounce wide. I think you said it earlier, though, too. Y'all want low shots. Don't get it up in the blocker. Don't get it up in the chest. Get it on the on the leg pad so that it bounces off and get a rebound here. Smacked away from Urban there by 70, and it'll bounce back in the Wyzetta zone as Hill Murray finishing up a change. You know, it's a good lesson, too, for, for the Pioneers, too, to play. You know, here's how you play when you're protecting a lead a little bit, too. It's, it's the game situations that you can only get in games. Here they come. Partial breakaway chance. Kristen Kaufman shot it high and wide. 
Kimmelinger played that real nice. She cut, got down and cut the angle off a little bit and took a lot of net away from, from the shooter. Back to center it comes. It tried to pop it away from Lucy Zupfer there. Back into the Wyzetta zone and good work to keep that play alive. Veselovic after it. There's a good St. Paul name, Veselovic. Well, and uh, Coach Jeff was there was, uh, was eager to see what I was guessed that name was at, and I'm hoping I'm getting it right here. He, he gave me a little pronunciation guide on her, but uh, centering pass coming out high, intercepted there. You know, I think in a way, too, he, he was talking about, you know, playing a diner the other night and how it really was a bonus for them because they played well at Braemar. Uh, actually, it was a two-to-one game. They got an empty netter, but, you know, I can see the advantage that, that Hill Murray has right now by playing a diner the other night. Yeah, you get used to that speed. And he was honest. He said, you know, frankly, and we've, we play them every year, and in some of the recent years they've really kicked our butts, and this time he felt pretty good about the way his team had, had played in that one. Kicked loose, Beldy oh. putting it out front. Kimlinger a save, and then Beldy kicked it in on net again. I doubt it would have counted if that Cheater. one had gone in. Cheater. <laughs> <laughs> she intentionally kicked it, but boy, I'll tell you, Beldy's played a game, hasn't she? She's been something for the Pioneers. As she kicks it out front right to a teammate there, and Shea Stanett got a good shot on, and then the second one kicked in. Kimlinger able to stop them both, and Kimlinger Again, you know, maybe in the second period, those felt like a couple that were a little bit, you know, unlucky bounces for them, but she has really stood up nicely here in this third. Well, Nina Stegoff showing some, uh, some nice moves there. Oh, they look for the tip out front, and the puck was lost sight of the puck, so ruled uh, a whistle sounding there as uh, trying to get out front for the tip was 70 there. Trojans control the draw, looking to break it out around to Matthews, but good step up there. And then Matthews, though, took it away from Franco. Pass across for Branton. Branton controlling. They've done a nice job on Branton. We haven't really seen her get a lot of great chances in this one. I think she's gotten one the entire game, to be honest with you. Intercepted at center, but they couldn't get it in deep. Now picked up by Boyer. Her pass off a of skate. Back the other way, Urban had her stick lifted. Nice work by Shea Stanette, and then relayed in. We go under a minute to play. It's been a quick game as just the one penalty back in the first period. Empty net now for Wyzetta, and they were lucky there because that pass was intercepted and brought back in, though, offside. That would have been a relatively easy empty net goal had they not been offside there. Surprised at all that they pulled goalie with a 4-1 deficit? No. Why not? Give it a whirl. You're going to have to play it again sooner or later. You might as well get used to it now. To the blue line. They dig for it here. Branton... As it did it away, and then a shot by Sammy Hackley blocked out front. Trojans with the extra skater here, trying to pull it closer here. They're going to run out of time, obviously, to come all the way back, yeah. but uh, under 25 seconds. Puck kicked around. Here's a shot. That one hit a shin pad. Back out top. Quick little pass back for Matthews. Pioneers pass broken up. Under 10 to play here in the third. Centering pass swept right back out to the corner. And that is going to do it for our hockey game. So, wow. Hill Murray, an impressive victory here over seventh ranked Wyzetta. They got one goal in the first and then three more in the second. And they show why they're one of the better programs in the state as they pick up their sixth win of the season here. And I thought Wyzetta, you know, for good stretches of the game, they played fairly well, Dan, but just overall didn't quite match the skating and, yep. and uh, you know, had a, didn't get a few pucks by Kennedy that maybe seemed like they could have too, but um, not a 
awful performance by them, but one that leaves them with some things to work on, I think. Well, I, I think the thing that they were, I think Hill Murray's a better skilled team. I mean, they skate better, they shoot better, and their playmaking was way better. They uh, Pucks weren't jumping off their sticks like they were on Loisette and stuff, and uh, I'm impressed with the Pioneers very much, so. And when you look at their losses, well, geez, I could see why. Um, they're going to be a team to be reckoned with here, and I know they got to go get back to state, too, after being upset by uh, White Bear in the section final last year, but... Uh, Good lesson for Wyzetta, though. Like you said, learn how to play from behind. Find out what it's like to be, you know, behind like that. And uh, it'll be an interesting practice at Plymouth Ice Center on Monday afternoon. So we hope you've enjoyed this one here today. It is Hill Murray defeating Wyzetta by a score of 4-1. to one. For Dan Ficken and all of our crew, I'm Jay Wilcox. So long from Aldrich Arena.